Hey everybody, it's James here from the Sawyer Family Reviews channel, bringing you another monstrous review. Today we're taking a look at the Jada Toys 6-inch Universal Monsters Creature from the Black Lagoon. Let's check him out. Okay, let's start things off with a look at Creature in the Box. So these um, Jada Universal Monsters lines obviously draw some inspiration from like Star Wars Black Series, in that they've got these window-style boxes with the um, cut out here along the side and cut out along the top. It really feels like a Black Series style box, and that's fine to draw inspiration from other lines, and you want to kind of match what's going on with Six Inch Lines. I think that's pretty cool. So you've got the Universal Monsters logos here, the Creature from the Black Lagoon movie logo down below, this nice blue patterning along the sides, an image of the creature on that side. Some black and white caricature type drawings of some of the Universal Monsters on the side. What's interesting is, is that they don't have Dracula on there. So Dracula's in the first wave, but we only have three from the first wave pictured along the side. It's kind of strange. Universal Monster logo up top, and then we've got the other figures in the line, and then a bunch of write-up down here. You know, the usual stuff. JadaToys.com. We see Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, Dracula, the Creature from Black Lagoon. What's cool is they use, they do use the correct logos for each one of them. And also available there. Um, here's the thing. You can definitely tell, even by the back of the box, that they did not get likeness rights for Bell Lugosi or Karloff. They don't, they don't look like them. And usually I think you have to even note if you're going to, if you have, if you're losing the Lugosi likeness, I think you have to actually put it on there. I don't think you do it with Karloff, but I think you do have to do it with Lugosi, but it's not on here anywhere, so. But we're not talking about him today. We're talking about the creature. So let's get him out of there. Okay, creature is out of the box. Uh, first impressions, this figure is pretty awesome. It is pretty great. I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I have been enjoying it as I took it out of the box. Um, okay, first of all, what does he come with? So he does include one ex extra hand, and it's more of a gripping hand. I guess you could use it to grip this guy if you really wanted to, but really this is used to hunt the creature, this uh, spear gun that is used in the film. Now this is all in one solid silver plastic. It's got two little tiny paint apps of black on the handle and on the little spare handle here. Um, so it doesn't have a lot of, of paint apps going on. It's just kind of a, an accessory there. And then we've got this beige net, which the net is quite large. The net's... Definitely able to you can capture your creature with that guy. Um, let me move these back just a bit. Then we've got the fossilized hand from the beginning of the movie. It starts the whole hunt for the creature in the film. That's got a nice sort of cream color to it. I don't really see much of a paint wash, but it is well sculpted. It's nice. Then we've got an extra head for the creature. I think each of the figures in the wave... Has an extra head. I could be wrong on that, though. But this one is more of a closed mouth, just kind of stoic creature, as opposed to the open mouth version that comes on the figure. Um, Height-wise, let's do that first, and then we're going to talk about articulation and the overall impression of the figure. If I can get him to stand back up. I was playing with his articulation, so now he's all twisted around. Creature stands at top of his head is right at about the six and a half mark maybe just a little under six and a half inches so this guy will scale well with your six inch figures let's bring in six inch classified destro just to show you how they stack up to each other destro is going to take a tumble so they do it will look good with your six inch figures which is the first creature i believe to work well with six inch figures since maybe the toy island version was the toy island yeah the toy island is like six inch version two this whole line kind of feels like an update to the 6-inch Toy Island uh, Universal Monsters line in that these were very much of the style then. Like, these kind of mimicked off of Marvel Legends with a Build-A-Figure and kind of that clamshell packaging. They were very reminiscent of Toy Biz Marvel Legends, and the current line from Jada feels like it's a answer to Black Series in their packaging and kind of their scale. So this feels like an update to that line to me. Articulation-wise, his feet can hinge back and forth, and then they're on a rocker. Then we've got a, a swivel. No, no swivel there. He does have a double-jointed knee, which can kick all the way back to there, which is very impressive. He's got rotation at the top of his hip, and it's very well hidden. Like, I didn't even know it was there inside the packaging, but there's rotation right there. 
and it's kind of hidden by the scales. That's really nice. That's impressive. So we've got hips that will hinge out to there and swivel forward to there, swivel back to there. It's a nice, nice range, man. Really nice. For a character that is, you know, scaled, it's covered in scales and pieces go down onto each other. He's really well articulated. So then we've got waist rotation that can hinge back and forth. We've got upper torso articulation that can move all over the place and going back and forth a little bit. Then we've got um, shoulder rotation all the way around. And then they hinge up and down. Yeah, they can go all the way into there and all the way up to there. Rotation at the top of the bicep, again, really well hidden. They took really good advantage of all the scales and the way they fall down onto each other of making this a really well articulated figure. We've got double jointed elbow, so we can kick up to there. Then we've got rotation at the wrist that hinge in and out. And then the head is just on a ball joint. That's the most restricted joint of the bunch. And that has to do with the, just the design of the head. It can't kick back a whole lot. You want to make him accurate. You don't want to sacrifice accuracy for articulation. Paintwork is super impressive on this guy for being, I think this may be Jada's first six inch line. And man, they came out strong because this figure is well articulated and he's well painted. It's got this nice shimmer all over. You see it all over his legs. Like it's got a gold and a rust mix to it. The toenails are all painted. There's a nice wash in between the fingers. The mouth has a nice kind of wet pinkness to it. It's even got like, you can see the sculpt inside there were like the sides of a fish mouth almost. Not really teeth, but so much, you know, the, the folds of fleshy skin inside there. Um, man, the gold in his eyes. It's just really good. Like, it's a really good figure. I was not expecting to like these as much as I do. I thought that, you know, oh, you know, NECA's going to be knocking this this Universal Monsters thing out of the park. I don't even know why JD's even bothering. But this is a fun figure. This is a fun, well-articulated, you-can-play-with-it type of figure. It's not like just put it on a shelf or something like that. You could really play around with this guy. You can get some good posing going on him. If I was a kid... You know, if I was a kid that wanted to play with Universal Monsters, I might pick this kind of line over maybe the NECA stuff. I know the NECA stuff is really well articulated and well painted and everything. But as far as, like, I feel this is durable. Like, this guy is going to be able to play around and be just fine. Like, I could do some, you know, shots of him out in the water and not feel like I'm going to hurt the figure. It's just, man, very impressive. Very impressive job from Jada here. I'm liking this figure quite a bit. Uh, next to some other creatures, I only have some packaged ones right now. I have to dig up my loose stuff while I'm doing these reviews. Um, so, you know, these are previous creatures we've gotten. The Sideshow Collectibles 8-inch version. The, you know, Toy Island one that we've already shown. He may not have the sculpt of this version, which was an incredible sculpt for the time. But the articulation is definitely better on this guy. The paintwork and, and sculpt are probably still, this is the superior creature. I'm curious to see what NECA will do. It'll probably be in between these two, where it'll have a really nice paint job, really nice sculpt, but maybe not quite the amount of articulation that this guy's pulled off. And then the Toy Island one is just kind of the Toy Island one. I'm not, bad, I'm not mad about this Toy Island one. I still have a lot of fondness for the Toy Island Universal Monsters line. But this guy is awesome. So he retails, the retail of a lot of places online is 25 bucks, but I found him at Meyer for 20 bucks, and that is a bargain. This guy is great for 20 bucks. If you're a creature fan, I highly recommend you grab this guy. He's cheap, he articulates well, he's got a nice paint job, he's got a nice sculpt. It's overall a pleasurable experience of buying a figure. I had no issues with any of the joints, nothing was stuck, nothing was frozen, I didn't have to heat him up. He was just good right out of the box, just playing around. Now the other figures in the line... And this is another way I feel like this is an update to the Toy Island Universal Monsters line. We talked about this earlier. They don't really look like Karloff and Lugosi. And um, the Bride of uh, Frankenstein doesn't really look like Elsa. I don't think that the likenesses are there. And they may not have likeness rights. I feel like the Toy Island line almost didn't have likeness rights either. They're very just kind of generic Universal Monsters. And a lot of times Universal Monsters will have sort of a generic look to their posters or their merchandising. And that's what I feel like this line is going after. It's just a not specifically certain actors in roles, but just that monster. 
if you know what I mean. But the creature doesn't have that problem because the creature is a costume. It's a suit. It's not a likeness inside there. So the creature is very, very close to how he appears in the movie. Um, man, awesome figure. Highly recommend it. Uh, that's about it for this one. If you're enjoying the videos, please like, subscribe, notify, leave a comment down below. Stay tuned for more of these monster reviews, and I'll uh, see you guys next time. Bye.